Hello there, my friends. Welcome back to the show. This is Michael Glover, your host. It is awesome to have you back here again with me on this lovely Monday morning. And as it is Monday, as usual, I have a pretty epic guest for you on the show today. It's with someone called Kate Palette. Now, Kate is someone I've been connected with online for a few months now, and we've got, get, I've been kind of watching a few of her videos that she does on Facebook and that sort of stuff. And she, she's got a really active Facebook um, account uh, and has some really awesomely inspirational and or just awesome like mindset stuff going on on her account and it's just really awesome to to listen to that and to see that and it really spoke to me and I and I I really wanted to have her on the show to just to talk to her and talk to her about her story which is what we did so um on the episode today we we talk about Kate's story and she's got a pretty well I suppose in some way well in a lot of ways tragic story about how she was a nurse um, in Australia, where she's where which is where she's from. Uh, she lost her stepson um, a few years ago, and essentially, as you can imagine, things took a bit of a downward spiral for her in the mental and emotional uh, area, and, and 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 it wasn't a nice place for her to be in, but. We talk about that and we talk about how she got through that and how she dealt with the mental and emotional side of that and the anxiety that this brought. She basically suffered with anxiety hugely um, and and, and how, she, how she got through that and how she has now got to where she is, which is sharing a lot of this mindset stuff, a lot of this stuff about fear, self-doubt, and all this stuff that a lot of us have going on, and and how she overcame and got through what she did in order to get to where she is now, which is where she's launched her first course around this fear and mindset stuff and self-doubt stuff. And and uh, it's, it's really awesome to hear her story. So more specifically, what we talk about on the show is, as I've already mentioned, Kate's story of overcoming the crippling anxiety from this personal tragedy, uh, how Kate overcame huge resistance to public speaking uh, and anxiety around public speaking in order to essentially get on stage and tell her story to all these people on stage and and the reaction she got from that how she got through that and the kind of feelings that she was dealing with th through that so that was a pretty awesome part of the interview as well how what she calls 20 seconds of courage can help you break through fears. Where fear actually comes from and how it manifests itself as well. And also implementing meditation for what she calls racing minds, what Kate calls racing minds, which is what she she has or what she claims to have. Um, and uh, how you can start delaying procrastination and dealing with this procrastination in this delaying way, which is really interesting to talk about as well. And also why it's important that you break the guilt cycle for mental and emotional well-being. So breaking that cycle of guilt, of thinking, okay, this is how I feel, and then going feeling guilty for feeling that way and then feeling guilty for feeling guilty and just this cycle of guilt and how we can break that guilt cycle it's a really awesome concept and really interesting to talk to Kate about so that's what we talk about on the show 
It's a really awesome interview. I hope you enjoy it. Don't forget you can head over to the website and get any links that Kate mentions on her show notes page that will be available at IamMichaelGlover.com forward slash 061. It will take you straight to Kate's show notes page. That that is IamMichaelGlover.com forward slash 061. You can also get in on the Facebook group as well. That's a nice cool growing facebook group now it's really starting to get engaged i'm doing some live streaming in there as well so head over to the facebook group and you can get in there at i am michaelglover.com forward slash tribe that's i am michaelglover.com forward slash tribe you can get straight into the facebook group there and get connected with all the other listeners everyone else in the group it's a nice awesome community we've got going now so get in the facebook group if you're not there already but i am going to be quiet now and let you Get in on the conversation with me and Kate. So here we go. Hey there, Kate. How are you doing? I'm good, Michael. How are you? I'm awesome. I'm awesome. It's cool to have you on the show. I've been following your videos and stuff for a little while, so it's awesome to have you on. Yeah, I'm stoked to be on. I've been loved your podcast right from the start, so really stoked to be on. Awesome! It's good to have a good to have a follower on, a supporter on to the, yeah. uh, to the show. <laughs> yeah, I remember listening to the first few, and I was like, "I like this guy. He's real. <laughs> He's got it going on." So, yeah, um, big congratulations to you. I think it's so authentic and real to listen to listen to your podcast, especially you know when you're talking on your journey and things like that. I love it. So well oh, done. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so how I, you probably know how I normally start these interviews, but uh, how I normally start them <laughs> is with a, a, a pretty simple question is, uh, who who is Kate Pallet? Oh, you know what? I Yeah, I have thought about this today because automatically, and I think that most people do, I want to list off that I'm a wife and a mom and, a, you know, ex-nurse and a business person and stuff like that but when um right down to it I'm not actually really sure I know that well I know that I am on a journey and I bloody I hate that sort of analogy (laughs) but I am I'm on that um that way of just trying to be my realest and truest authentic self and really get in line with my gut and my head and my heart and putting that all together. And, you know, and then on top of all of that, I've got, you know, the things that I, the labels that I have and the, the things that I do um, that make me who I am. So, you know, I'm, I, I must be having a midlife crisis or something <laughs> like that because it's basically, yeah, about to hit 40. And the last few years, it's just been like asking myself the exact same question. Who actually am I? And what is this whole thing about? And so all of a sudden, all of those titles like a nurse and a business person and a mum and a sister and a daughter and all of that stuff just make up a part of me. But but the important journey for me at the moment is really just trying to live that authentic life and helping, showing other people that that's okay to do as well even if it might be going against the grain of things. So, yeah, so I can't answer it. I can't answer it like some of your guests can, but it is a evolving journey and something I really try and get in touch with every day and the days that I don't take that time to to have that time to myself in the morning, which, you know, we'll probably talk about because it's a big cornerstone in my life, um, over the last few years is days where I have to, um, you know, ask myself that question 
and go, okay, what's going on? Why am I feeling a little bit off kilter? And, um, yeah, and pull it back into line. So just, yeah, getting to know myself, really. Is that, you know, yeah, is that cool. that's pretty like normal? I, th- I think that's pretty normal. So Yeah, I, mean, I, I like that kind of going going beyond those labels that we kind of put on ourselves of yeah wife and mum and business person and all these kind of labels that we kind of put on ourselves and kind of going a little bit trying to get deeper than that and it's uh, yeah i think that's when we start to to, to really discover things yeah, because I think it's really easy for when someone does ask you, you know, so tell me about yourself. You straight away jump into what it is that you do. And, um, and you know, I've just sort of got to a point over the last few years especially um, of just thinking, actually, there's there's more than what I do. There's, you know, a lot about, you know, who I am. And so just trying to, trying to uncover that has been really challenging um, um, but rewarding but also really challenging for people around me because sometimes you start, they start questioning about who it is that they think you are do you know what i mean so yeah that's been really interesting yes nice nice. you've just launched your uh first course recently or are you about to launch or have you just launched yeah well done i've done one round of it yeah so it's an an embrace your fear um sort of boot camp that I put together, which had been a few years in the in the making, and this is all part of getting to know who I am for myself because I always, in the last few years, had noticed that I had a little bit of a, a skill to help people to, you know, push some limits and push some boundaries, especially women. I talk about women because that's, you know, what I can relate to myself. Um, with how you get stuck, you know, with those titles of wife and mum and things like that. And I noticed around me people were coming to me and asking me, um, you know, for advice, and I realised it wasn't just me that sometimes felt trapped and, um, you know, doubted myself, that it was, you know, pretty much an epidemic for <laughs> whether or not it's the people I associate with or whatever. So I, I decided to, you know, put together a course, a bit of a boot camp, I called it, because there was tasks involved and little stretch tasks and things. And the from what I thought I was doing to what it actually ended up with the results from the first round of participants, I couldn't have even imagined, you know, that that would be what I had created through that. So, yeah, so I've sort of felt that this part of the journey is actually realising that this is something that I, I need to do. So... It's, um, yeah, been fantastic. So about to launch into the second round of it, really. So the next lot of participants coming through. And I realise the community that's formed with these these women that are being honest with themselves and real and saying, yeah, you know what, I'm holding myself back because I'm scared, not because I don't have time, not because I... You know, the kids are sick or the husband needs me or the dog's sick. It's actually because I'm scared to push myself a little bit out of my comfort zone. So, um, yeah, it's, I've, I've gained as much as – I'm gaining from the participants as much as they're sort of gaining from me, which is just a beautiful thing. Yeah. I think we sometimes use yeah. those things like, oh, I don't have time or yes. you know, the, the husband, we kind of use them as like validations of why we can't do what we want to do. And it just keeps us stuck. Absolutely. And um, 
that's why I'm, I'm yeah, truly. So a lot of my course is um, making sure that participants give themselves at least, I always try and take an hour in the morning to really sort of get focused and work out and get, whether it's mindfulness, whether it's whatever, but just get to know what's going on for me internally um, because when you are busy and same for everyone, you know, everyone's busy and we're attached to gadgets and we're, you know, nonstop got input coming in that often we don't take that time to really get to reflect and be honest with ourselves. And at the end of the day, um, a lot of those excuses is what I find with the, you know, people that I'm sort of chatting to, they're like, you know what? I am. I'm scared to do it. I'm scared of failure. I'm scared of what if um, what if people laugh? What if people, you know, that sort of thing. And so I've created this little environment, this little community where um, it's safe to do it and and to um, do it in a safe environment before you got to go public. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's um. It's it's been really wonderful to to watch that growth. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. I want to take a, a, a step back now and kind of go back into mm-hmm. how you got to this point of where you're at. And you you mentioned you used to be a nurse, right? So like, yeah, what, yeah. What what was what were you doing as a nurse and, and why did you decide to exit out of that? Oh, I'd always wanted to be a nurse ever since I was a child. And, and so I got in there, was nursing and thinking, this is it, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. And then all of a sudden it's the same as, you know, what you think reality is going to be, you know, what you think it's going to be. And then when reality hits and it's just like, actually, is this it for the next 60 years? Um, And so I loved nursing. I absolutely love the nursing side of things but as you progress through the rank you know the system and you start being in charge and you've got more and more responsibilities often to do with admin as opposed to care I just found myself getting really um just getting really a bit disheartened with thinking is this is this gonna is gonna be it and but I am very 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 thankful for nursing in the sense that when I was actually working um, at the Royal Children's Hospital in in Melbourne, um, which is sort of three hours from where I'm from, I actually reconnected with my now husband who was there with his his son. Um, his son um, had, he was a single dad and I was actually a single mum. So we reconnected there and he he was from my town as well. And he had um, a son in there that had just been newly diagnosed with, um, with leukaemia. So I, you know, we were pretty much inseparable from that moment and and all of that sort of stuff. It was beautiful, like it was fate. I truly believe that. We sort of rekindled and ran into each other after not seeing each other for a few years. And, um, yeah, as fate would have it, um, George went on to have, you know, a couple of really great years. We had two beautiful years as a family. And, um, yeah, and George was taken from us. He was called called back. And and it was pretty um, – it was – it was pretty horrendous, like it was pretty trying, as you could imagine. So my, um, so Geordie, obviously my stepson, but he lived with us full time and things. And he, so my husband was the most amazing single father to this beautiful boy who actually had disabilities. 
um, had global developmental delays and and was but was just wonderful. And so my 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 husband had really just identified with um, being a dad and being a dad to this beautiful beautiful child who wanted more nothing more than to have hugs and wheat bix and you know that sort of stuff and it was wonderful they were just a beautiful pair and so after George left us after he passed away um I just went into complete lockdown mode of getting around my family, rallied around my my husband especially and my daughter who was four at the time and um, and basically just shut down around my family and was just like, okay, now I'm in protection mode. Now let's just get straight back into it, back into work, back into everything that we had to do. My husband completely shut down and um, really just went through the motions of just going to work, coming home, going to work, coming home. And um, as you know, you cannot push grief away. It will boil up and it will come out somewhere. And for me, it actually came out in the form of anxiety and panic attacks probably a couple of years after um, all of this happened. And, you know, I was sort of like the whole chaos of grief that had been suppressed for so long as it was now coming out for me in terms of just wanting to completely control everything and not letting anything go out of control. And I didn't want to actually, um, I didn't want to leave the house if I wasn't certain about what was going to happen or what social events. It was just, and I was actually suffering with this quite silently for a few years before I even mentioned anything because at the time it wasn't about me, it was about my husband and trying to get him through um, through everything that was going on, you know, because Often as mums that's and wives, that's just what we do. We put ourselves last and, and that's what came out for me. So when that finally, when it all erupted, when I was an absolute mess and I just realised that this, um, I couldn't go on like this anymore and so... Um, we all went off and we got some help and we got some counselling and all of that sort of stuff. But still, I carried that fear, that dread fear of of things being out of control for me and out of control for my family. Um, I carried it a lot um, through life, sort of through my everyday life. Even though you know we were starting to get things back on track and everything with our life. And I just wanted to have a complete break away from 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 nursing, and I I just felt like I just couldn't do it anymore and um, whatnot. So I decided to start my own business. So I thought, okay, fresh new start, let's do this. And you know what happened is that every time I had to do something related to my business, when I couldn't, you know, do any more fluff around, you know, make any more flyers up or do any, you know, (laughs) write more rule lines in my diary and I actually had to do some work in my business that dealt with um, you know, speaking to people, I realised that actually I was completely still um, trapped in this in this grief and this situation and, and I could not put myself in situations where I felt um, I felt like I had to push through the fear and the nerves. I literally wouldn't do it and that's not a real way to start a business so it's um you know and it's not a good way to progress a business by not wanting to stretch out of your comfort zone so you know I'd be like yeah yeah yeah, I've done heaps of work to done the business but really I'd just sort of been in the office all day and not really done anything because I was just so frightened so what I decided to do was actually um put just 
start actually admitting what was going on for me. And that was the first step was me actually just saying, you know what? I am struggling here, even though we thought we dealt with it on the grief side of things, but this was still going on for me. So I decided I was going to, little by little, just celebrate the little things I did. It didn't. I didn't have to look at the big picture and think, okay, this month or this week or this whatever, I've got to do all these things. It was it's just like today, just one thing. What are you going to do today? Just one thing. And so I started setting little tasks for myself and, and doing that. And, and that proved to be, okay, one more thing, one more thing. And I like to call it 20 seconds of courage, basically, is just if anything, all you've got to do today is just have 20 seconds of courage. 20 seconds of courage will start this little bit of momentum and will start you feeling a little bit better. So I started putting that into my business. And so little by little I did that um, until, you know, I gained a, a bit of success in my business, which was fantastic, and then I was actually asked to speak at a conference and um, they said, just get up and speak about something about your business and how, you know, what you've influenced. And I actually decided that I'd get up and talk about the fact that I suffer from anxiety and panic attacks. And everyone, yeah, so in front of like 500 people, I thought, you know what, this is my chance to take this power away from this thing that I had been hiding and and um, that's why I love when I listen to your podcast. It was, you know, was it 40, number 45 or something? I sound like a complete freak, but yeah, it was 45. Um, and when you were just real and you put it out there because – from that one conference, you know, four, five, six years later, I still have people who were there who come up to me and go, I remember you, I remember your story, I remember you saying that. And it completely took the power away of this thing that I had been um, hiding. And so... Now I just – and I realised that throughout time, throughout years of people saying that to me that I had given them permission to actually say – and that's what they were saying to me, I feel the same or I suffer the same thing or I – you know, and I'm not saying I'm, I'm there as, a, as an expert or a guru on anything, but I'm such a big advocate of just take its power away. Just admit it and then you know what you're dealing with because otherwise if you're masking all your – fears behind I don't have enough time and I don't do this and I don't, you know, I can't do this and and I don't have enough money or, you know, my husband, you know, whatever, you're never going to get, be able to fight, you know, beat what is actually holding you back. So that's my thing with um with this group is that I'm not saying every, and I'm not a psychologist and I'm not a counsellor and that's what I tell them is that if they are feeling like they're stuck and they know it's because of self-doubt or not, you know, not having that belief in themselves and things, let's just put it out there. Say that that's what it is. Now let's work on it sort of thing. So, um, and I've just, I've just realized throughout, throughout my, you know, journey and, and dealing with people and dealing with women is that this is quite significant. We do, we hold ourselves back and, and I just think it's, it can't be any longer. And on the whole mental health thing, um, I don't know what it's like in the UK, but in Australia, it's we're definitely progressing forward in terms of um, just saying it, putting it out there. But I've got a brother that, that or close family member that suffers really quite severely with um with um, mental illness, and he's a professional, and he's you know does does you. Know, 
know, he's amazing and amazingly smart, academic and all that sort of stuff, yet um, he just feels like he can't admit it. So it's really quite, um, you know, quite sad. So mine's not to that case, but I do think that unless we just start speaking and being honest, we're never going to get attraction on this. So I just thought, well, I'm not... I'm not um, not qualified to actually to you know talk on mental illness or treating that. But what I am qualified to talk on, I believe, is is to um, help people just push through these upper limit things that that they hold on themselves without even realizing. So, hence the Embrace Your Fear boot camp was born after me thinking of doing it for a few years, but um. About six months ago, I decided, nah, I'm doing it, and I just did it, and I pushed, I gave myself 20 seconds of courage, I posted on Facebook, who wants to join a Embrace Your Fear boot camp, and I, you know, couldn't have been happier with um, with the response that I got from that, and realising that, yep, yeah, there's, a, there's a need for this, so... Um, yeah, it's been pretty. It's pretty amazing. So wow. that's that, that's what I what I love. What you said there is not giving it power anymore because I think that's oh. something that we don't we don't necessarily see when we're in it when we're in that thing and we're in the situation of feeling like that is that a lot of the yeah. times we're the we're the ones who are giving this whatever it is we we we're giving that feeling power and we can just as yeah. easily choose to take it away. Yeah. Yeah, completely right because it's like that whole, you know, you hold a, you know, the beach ball under, you know, under the water, under the water and you think, I've got this, I've got this. I'm, you know, you're white knuckling your life and you're holding it under there and you're thinking, I'll, I'll over, <laughs> overpower it. And eventually what happens is it just erupts and it, and it's, um, you know, and that's, that's when, that's when, you, you, it's very hard to get your power back then. So I'm just like, let's just name it. Let's just put it out there. Now let's deal with it and um, and go with it. And you know what? The moment I, I said I suffer from anxiety and panic attacks and it was free. Mm. I was free from it. It was amazing. So, yeah. 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 It's good, and now I joke about it. Now I'm like, oh god, I'm feeling a little bit, fun. you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't happen very often now, but in certain situations, and I can feel that sort of rise coming. And because I can vocal, you know, verbalize it and say to whoever I'm with, oh god, I'm about to. I feel like I'm about to have a panic attack. Instantly, it takes it away. It's bizarre. So, yeah. yeah. So when we talk about fronting up to it and being mm. and and basically looking it straight in the eye, like when you did that with that speech that you did, mm. what yeah. was it like in the run up to it? Like in the maybe when you first decided to do it a few weeks before and then yeah. running up to it, because I can imagine a lot of people sat at home thinking, I, I can't, I can't do anything like that or, or, or I can't like, yeah. up to it or do do that so what was it like in in the run-up to it for you um oh, I want to tell you I was so excited and I couldn't wait to get up there but I don't think I slept <laughs> yeah. for two weeks beforehand and to tell you the truth I actually got really sick in the days leading up to it and I'm sure that was just my body just going you know um let's see how much you really you know do you really want to do this because I felt I wanted to actually you know 
cancel and say I'm too sick to get up there because I was, you know, in bed the day before with, you know, um, temperatures and sweating and all of that stuff. And I thought, you know what, I think it was like, it was almost, and I'm not like a woo-woo very much, but um, it was almost like a cleansing it was like, and then it instantly, it was once I got up there and I did it and it, um, it was, yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty powerful. And so I look back to that all the time and then, um, you know, having other occasions where I've had to stand in front of the room and speak and, and it's, um, you know, and it's it's now sort of fun for me, which is, sounds a bit sick, but I I do love it. So, but I even remember back in school, hating when the teacher would make me read out loud and all of that sort of stuff. So it's not something as an adult that's just come. I'm sure it was something that I had as a child, as well. But it was just never, you know, never labelled. I remember sort of wanting to cry when you'd get you know, called to the front of the room and stuff like that. It was just, you know, terrible. I hated that. I didn't even have a, a wedding because I didn't want to be the centre of attention. Wow. So we eloped. So, yeah. <laughs> wow. How did you deal with the the fear of being judged by the other people in the room and the people around you when you were, when you were doing that speech? Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember thinking they, I made, because I've got a little bit of a personality where I do make a little, I'm okay to hang crap on myself. Do you know what I mean? So I, in the, in the presentation, it wasn't like I got up there. So it was, I think it was about 20, 25 minutes. I didn't get up there and just sort of do the poor me thing. I sort of made a bit of fun about myself and how, you know, I, um, you know, I would cancel appointments because I'd say, oh, someone's sick, and I was like, yeah, it was me in the head, you know, yeah. that sort of yeah. thing. And they, you know, I sort of just made that, you know, a little bit lighthearted as well. But at the end of the day, the message was very clear as to what I was putting across there. And, and after that, I just owned it. I just was like, you know what, the statistics are out there. There's probably, you know quarter of you at least in here that can completely relate to me so um so i'm just going to put it out there and be your voice for it right now so yeah yeah but i was um yeah i was i was pretty nervous but as soon as the applause was all that i needed to know that i had made the absolute right decision so yeah so when did you decide, yeah. was, was this before you decided to get into all this mindset stuff or, or was that like the trigger for saying, ooh, I like this, this kind of... It was, it was sort of the trigger, yeah, because, you know, you're told when you start a business and you do all of that sort of stuff is like... Um, is, you know, read self-help books and professional development and all that stuff. And I was always like, yeah, 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 whatever, you know, just show me, show me what to do and give me the, the give money. me the computer. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. And I was like, yeah, whatever. And so this, that was sort of, yeah, it was the catalyst to starting that. It was the catalyst to then realising what I've said has impacted people. Okay, how about now if I start? And it wasn't deliberate I was going to go from there to put in a course together. It was just sort of like over the next bit of time, every time I'd get asked to speak at things or whatever, everyone would like, oh, okay, we love it when you speak. You're just so real and stuff. And I realised that actually that for a lot of people that's lacking realness and authenticity and someone up the front of the room that's had success but it's like going, you know what, sometimes things are really subtle, you know, sometimes things aren't aren't 
wonderful and sometimes I don't feel like getting up in the morning and, you know, that sort of stuff. And then they're like, wow, okay, if she can say it and then have success or then um, progress and, and chase her dreams, then it's okay for me too. So... Yeah, so it was sort of like this stepping stone. But over the last couple of years, I've really got into having that morning routine in the morning. And um, I know a a lot of people, you know, reading, um, you know, the, the Miracle Morning and even just, you know, Tony Robbins and talking, you know, him talking about his morning routine and all of that sort of stuff. I um and you know I listen to Tim Ferriss podcast and he always asks his guests and and I started thinking man there must be something in this um by having that time in the morning and so I started doing it and I sort of started I thought okay well let's do it for a week and see and that week was terrible so I stopped and then <laughs> and then another time I was like okay well it was sort of like it was called the five a.m. club get up five o'clock and I was like okay. Okay, I'm up. All right. Now what? Okay, I'm up. Check. Yep. Facebook. Awesome. Okay, good. Um, but it wasn't till I actually started putting things in place, um, you know, and it's, it's nothing new but taking some time to meditate. And I'm – I know you talk about meditation a bit, and I I have such a racing head, a racing mind, that it's very unusual for me to be able to completely switch off. But having that time just to even try, just to focus on my breathing, just to do just takes it down a notch and I now crave it if I don't do it I um yeah so I met I meditate I you know my and I'm only still on the guided meditation so you know on apps and things like that but for me that's an absolute a must for me now to have that time and then also I, I do a lot of trying to just connect and visualising my head, my heart, my gut sort of together. And this sounds woo-woo, so all of the listeners out there, if you're not very woo-woo, then that is okay. Still just take that time to connect with your breath because um, you realise how powerful you are when you do that. So, so I was doing that and just reading something every day, just reading something. And I'm a massive podcast listener and audio book listener. And I started realizing that a lot of the stuff that I was hearing people say and, and reading and all of that stuff was stuff that I actually had inside me as well do you know what I mean so it would it would be stuff that if someone asked me something on that situation especially if it was around fears and and pushing through self-doubts and stuff it would stuff that I would answer so I was like you know what I don't need and I started thinking maybe I need to go and do a life coaching course and then I was like that's just me delaying doing something so I thought I'm going to put it out there let's just see and yeah and it's been fantastic and so in my course I in my boot and I don't like to call it a course because it's not it's just really it's just giving little bits little stretch tasks each week and each week we have a weekly webinar where I do a first one basically doing a little bit of generalised, um, you know, uh, physiology basically on the brain, sort of just really, really, really basic. And, and so I had, to, I had to do psychology and stuff like that at, at uni for nursing and things like that. So I can teach like extremely basic and just talking about where the thoughts come from and why when we think a bad thought, um, you know, that we 
the limbic system in our brain all of a sudden just thinks it's happening to us right now. So we associate that thought of doing something that we're scared of with complete danger. So, and I felt that teaching and just informing people who, who for me, that's sort of do through because I've listened to so many things and read so many things, I'm aware of that, but a lot of people aren't aware of that. They just think they are their thoughts. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so we do, we really concentrate on, you know, that's not you, that's, you know, the primal part of you that's kicking right in to protect you but you've got control of that second thought. So what's the second thought that you're going to do? And um, so 20 seconds of courage on second thought being, a, you know, a big part of the of boot camp as well. And just awareness, awareness of when you are letting that thought dictate your actions. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, Morning routine on, you know, on second thoughts, 20 seconds of courage and also really around mindset around um, those beliefs around, you know, what we are capable of and, and, and all of that sort of stuff, which is, is really exciting to see people just um, blossom through that. And, yeah, it's, it's been fantastic. So, yeah, and I'm really, really clear to say that I'm not an expert, but I also really think that your um, hurdles in life and the things that you've been through are often what you are, uh, need to teach others to help get them through as well. Wouldn't you agree? Of course, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think yeah. we get, like yeah. you mentioned, the, the, the life coaching course thing before, and it, I think we just use yeah. this thing that we validate our current situation and we can't get out of our current situation because, oh, I'm not good enough because I don't have a life coaching course yet. So I need to go and yeah. do that. And then when you get to yeah. the end of that, you're like, well, uh, it, you know, it's all, all these other life coaches who have got all this other qualifications and all this other experience. And it's kind of like it's just delaying until you, until, until when, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and it's, um, yeah, and and that's what it, through this course I'm um, sort of encouraging people. What you know, what is it that you want to do? Because often you get stuck in certain situations and and you're not fulfilled, but you keep searching. And I'm not talking relationships or anything. I'm not qualified to go talk about those things, and I make that really clear. But in terms of you know. Um, what you're doing for a career and things like that. People just think that they, they've got to make that bit happy. Well, why not try and find something that makes you, you happy, you know, and try and in, bring that into your life? What are your gifts? What are your powers? You know, what are your, what are your things that people ask you? What do people ask you for advice for? Maybe, you know, people see our gifts before we are or you know, often see them and you don't need to be an, an expert. You don't need to be qualified to start, you know, pers pursuing those those goals and those, those things that you want to do. So I've never felt so fulfilled as um, right, right now working towards what I'm doing and, and helping, you know, women stretch through a little bit because they're coming back and they're saying our whole house is happier because I'm feeling more confident, because I'm feeling like I'm achieving, because I'm, you know, proving to myself that I can do things when I've, I've been making excuses that I can't. So it's got this real flow-on effect. And I know for me I'm on the right path because I get full body sort of, I get goosebumps totally all the time and when people, when the women text me and say that, you know, this amazing thing happened and that amazing thing happened and I'm like, okay, body 
in check. Yep, goosebumps. Okay, we're on the right path here. And so that's in start to your question this morning, you know, this morning, sorry, at the start of the podcast with who am I, that's why it's a journey um, because, but I feel like, you know, if I'm really honest with myself, I'm, I'm on the right path to actually know who I am. If you listen to your body, it will tell you. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, when it comes to, these fears showing up then how how do we yeah like i when when something comes up and we're like no i can't it's some scared and fearful or some kind of fear shows up like how mm -hmm. how would you deal with that and encourage people in your group to 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 deal with that in in the actual moment yeah awesome so Basically, I get them to have a thing and, and, you know, is what they're thinking that they're scared about. And it's usually the outcome of, um, you know, am I good enough? Will, will, will I be laughed at? You know, that sort of thing. It's what, you know, that sort of uh, – I'm – and I'll put my disclaimer here too. I'm not talking fears as in sna snakes and spiders, and I live in Australia and we have a lot of those, <laughs> um, and heights and bungee jumping and stuff like that. It's more in terms of, you know, holding you back in terms of progressing towards – um, what it is that you want to do because um, I don't think I would actually bungee jump I don't know um, but I mean so yeah so my thing is why what what's the worst that can happen here what's the worst outcome that can happen can you live with it you know yeah I can then you have to do it you have to do it go you have to stretch and also too a big part of it is is really and they give me this feedback as well. The thinking about doing something, the thinking about stretching yourself out to be uncomfortable and the delaying and the procrastination is so much worse than the actual just doing it. Even if the outcome is not actually what they desired or what would have been the ideal outcome, at least they've got an outcome and they're not um, procrastinating and they're not having that guilt cycle around, I need to do it, but I won't do it, I'm too scared. And that guilt cycle that goes around, they're like, I've done it, it didn't work, that's okay, rather than 24 hours of feeling crap about yourself because you know you've got to do something but you're scared. So... Just, yeah, weighing up and weighing up those things. So 20 seconds of courage. What's the worst that can happen here? If Can I live with it? Yes, then you've got to do it. And, um, and on second thought as well is the other thing. On second thought, no, nah, I can do this. You know, because immediately I still get that. I can't do this. I'm, I'm too scared. What will they do? They might hang up on me. They might, you know, especially ask, you know, asking for certain things to help advance your business and advance your career. You've got to put yourself out there. And, you know, what's the worst that can happen? Um, yeah. Can I live with it? Yeah, I can. That's okay. So... I, I, yeah. I love the phrase, the guilt cycle phrase you just used, because we, oh. we we just kind of we we tend to just like we we want to do something but we don't do it, and then we punish ourselves for not doing it, and then we punish yeah. ourselves for punishing <laughs> ourselves, and it's just this cycle of just like guilt and punishment and self like annoyance and frustration. Oh. And, yeah. It's so terrible. I had a, one of the ladies, gorgeous, and she was like, because one, you know, a lot of the stuff is, you know, they wanted to progress their businesses and stuff. So one of the tasks that we had recently um, in the group was, you know, do a Facebook Book live. We'd been doing them in the group, and now it was like, okay, now I go on your timeline, you know, your news feed and and whatnot. And she said she lost three nights of sleep 
She had texted me so many times about the top, you know, all this little stuff that to me now just seems so easy. But obviously, you know, to her, it was this massive thing. And when she did it, when she was only on there for 40 seconds, she had so many beautiful comments about, you know, and she was like, oh, my God, I just wasted three days of my life worrying about that and I did it for 40 seconds and I've had 700 views and people are saying how great I look and, you know, all that sort of stuff. And I was just like, see, it's not worth it, is it? Just do it. Do it. Those yeah. little, and like I made a video on this the other day, but this these little one degree shifts of shifting, and mm -hmm. it's just like, it, and when you shift, and then you shift again, and you shift again, and you shift, and they seem so small when you're doing it, and then yes. like even like a few weeks or a few months and a few years later, you'll look back and think. Wow, was I really worried about that? Was I really yes. worried about that yeah. sort of thing? Yeah, but wouldn't you agree too? After you, you don't you break through and you shift and you shift like you were saying, but there's still that next level to go. So that's what I sort of say in my embrace to fear. I'm always still feeling that fear. I'm always got it. It's always going to be there. So I'm just loving that part of me and saying this is part of me instead of trying to squash it or suppress it. And I'll, I'll know I'll always feel it. I'll know I'll always have that itty-bitty shitty committee that resides between my, you know, two ears and it will be trying to hold me back and that's okay. So instead of me just going, shut up, I don't need to hear you, I'm like, okay, thank you, but I'm going to do it anyway. And every day I still have that you know, and I think if you are growing and you are progressing, like you said, little by little by little, you'll keep hitting, you know, you'll keep going and eventually you'll look back and realise how far you've come. But that doesn't mean that you're still not going to have those fears in the future. Yeah. It's just going to be for something else. It's going to, yeah. And I am... Um, I now, you know, I'm just all about embracing that part of me instead of just thinking, you know, that part sucks and I hate that part. It's like, no, well, that part makes up a big, big part of me. So let's just love it, but let's just put it in the back seat instead of the front seat. Yeah, yeah, it's a constant evolution, and I, yeah, I think I don't think it ever goes away because you, I, I imagine that there's billionaires out there who you know for their next level it, it's like i can't do that i can't do that self-doubt fear all this kind of stuff that shows up and i don't think it ever yeah. goes away so what i've learned to kind of do is just is like you say em embrace that and just kind of learn to if it's not there at some point if i've kind of gone a period of time and it's not there then it's like things are stagnant, you're not growing, you're you you're not moving, you're and it's kinda of like, Ooh, why haven't like I'm why have not why have I not felt this fear for a while? I must be just Yes, it's so true stagnant yep. and not moving. So it's kinda of like you, you learn to yep. you learn to love it because that means that you're growing. Absolutely, absolutely. Like, I know, like, when I go on, you know, go on holidays or whatever for a few weeks, and I haven't felt that, and then I get back into my new, you know, my real life, and I'm like, well, there it is. Hello, you're still there. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was like, okay, let's get acquainted again. All right, let's go. So, it's, um, yeah, completely, but I just, I don't think people speak about it enough. Mm. You know what I mean? So, I think, like, it's like, yeah, it's all there it's part of us it's part of you know but for some people it's just there more often and they're you know and sometimes has a louder voice um in things that you know it has no place in in having a having a saying but yeah and it's just you know it is me it's what i am and 
Um, and I just want to show people that that's okay and it doesn't make you wrong and it doesn't make you broken. Um, just, you know, learn to sort of work with it. Something that I'm really interested in, Kate, is who has been your your biggest influence in your life? Holy moly! Okay, um, biggest influence in my life. I'm I've had some really um, well. I'm gonna say. My stepson, George, um, for one, because he um, he really just taught me how you don't need much to be happy. Yeah. Um, you know, you really don't. And he also really, him and my husband, Danny, together sh- just showed me this complete unconditional love that they just had for each other which is is beautiful so that but in a um um you know of course my kids as well I've got a daughter 18 who's uh, Millie who's 18 and now you know Dan and I have got a son together um Tanner he's six um he's taught me a lot of patience I'll tell you that um but in terms of I've actually got a mentor at the moment who probably has been, has shown me over the last year that has seen the gifts in me that I knew were there, but she's just really brought them out um, to make me see them. So, yeah, so I've got a mentor, Danelle, who... Actually, I'm super excited. She's from the US and I've never actually met her, but I'm bringing her out next month. I was in a couple of months to Australia to wow. to to work with my Embrace Your Fear group and, and other entrepreneurs out here because sometimes people forget that, um, you know, we're down here as well. So <laughs> yeah. I just... I said to I basically said to her, you know, because I couldn't get to one of her events, and I said, how can I get you here? So we've, yeah, we're bringing her out in a few months, so I'm pretty excited about that. But, um, yeah, so probably, probably those, you know, people in my life, really. Because, too, I think I haven't been ready to hear those things as well like I've had people of course throughout my life teach me things and but always I gave I gave too much control to the you know the 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 voice in my head that was like yeah that's nice as if Mm -hmm. as if um, but now I sort of, you know, must be my midlife crisis. <laughs> Everything sort of lining up to to be able to hear, um, you know, and to acknowledge that, you know, I've got some got some things to share and some things to teach. So, yeah, yeah. as as we all have. Yeah, absolutely, and that's that's what I so big on people realizing is that we've all got these gifts it's just finding the one that lights you up you know and and work with that i absolutely believe that yeah awesome the uh the the, the final question that i always ask uh kate as you probably aware mm-hmm. now is uh, what's What's your definition of an enlightened entrepreneurial badass? Okay. It is it's having that awareness of um, of who you are and really being authentically chasing the business um, and the life that you want. Not that you feel like you should have, not that you feel like um, you started on this path, so you've got to see it the whole way through. Um, And also, uh, 
you know, ones that obviously, so that's the enlightened entrepreneur, but the badass is the ones that will just keep going, just keep going um, and chasing those those goals as um as as long as you know but also acknowledging their impact on those around them as well so um yeah as long as you're putting good stuff out into the world enlightened authentic stuff out in the world just keep chasing your dreams you can't be you can't um yeah can't hold back on success um, there's enough success to go around, so help other people as you go as well.